Now, they're free in Wales and free will be in Scotland and Ireland, but here in England, we still have to pay for prescriptions. But in September 2008, Gordon Brown promised to abolish prescription charges for all people with long-term illnesses. But time is running out. If a new law is not passed before the election is called, many fear it will never happen. Well, now charities and MPs are calling on the PM to make good on his promise. The look at Andrew Pidlis, he's no different to any other 20-year-old. Football, very happy now, football. I look for a boy one year. You know, three years. But Andrew has cystic fibrosis, and his life expectancy is 35 years old. I try not to let it ruin my life as much as possible. Obviously, with the medication and that was really impossible with it. He does tend to overrun. But I just try and uh, be safe in to the floor and try and get off the air, like down to a minimum. Despite that, even playing on the wee pitch with his friends can can take it out of him. But staying fit is essential, and so are the mountains of hills he has to take every day. And another visit to the 45 tablets a day. These are uh, antibiotics, uh, a group of uh, vitamins. I inhale just in case I need it. And these are uh, when I would, would uh, digest them after the top of 45 tablets every day. and. You have to pay for these? Yes. Luckily, I've got a prepaid subscription. We've got 110 pounds over here. So it's, it's covered me through all my medication. Uh, but if that runs out and I start to renew it, then it's about £10.65 for medication. Andrew has now set up a Facebook campaign. 2,000 people have signed up, supporting his call for free prescriptions for cystic fibrosis sufferers. And it's an issue that affects millions of people. In 1968, the Labour government introduced a number of changes to prescription charges for young, the old, people on benefits, and a few people with chronic illnesses like diabetes no longer have to pay for medication. But very little has moved on since, and now many people are calling for a radical change. Eileen McDonald was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis 26 years ago. Like Andrew, she too paid for her prescriptions. She had to give up work 13 years ago and now helps other people with long-term illnesses in Warrington. Have you found that people have had to make really quite stark choices when it comes to finance? Yeah, we, they, they have to, to make the choice. Do I feed myself today? Do I keep my house warm today? Or do I take my medication? 182 MPs have now signed an early day motion demanding Gordon Brown stick to a pledge he made in 2008 to make medicine for long term illnesses free. But now some fear it will be spiked until after the election. The British Medical Association is calling on the government to go one step further and follow Wales by giving free medicine for all. The British system is unfair, illogical, producing dreamers and losers. And if we just want to extend that system, I don't think that it will deliver what is really required of it. If any decision is delayed until after the election, the pressure will inevitably fall on the next government to make the changes. The argument is unlikely to go away. The medication that we take is to keep them alive. They already would die. So why should we have to pay for the privilege to be alive when nobody else has to? Well, joining me now in the studio is the MP for Royal West, Stephen Hesford, and the Conservative candidate, uh, Paul Maynard, who's the candidate for Blackpool North and Cleveland. Uh, Stephen, if I can come to you, first of all, uh, we did ask Andrew Burnham to come on to the programme, but he couldn't, but he sent us a statement saying that uh, the Prime Minister said that uh, when the NHS generates cash savings in its jobs budget, that money will be found back into Bolton charges for all patients with long-term conditions. Now, that was in September 2008. Nothing has happened yet. What's well, first of all, let's just go 